Morning Year 5 and welcome to Wednesday's English lesson. So we are going to spend the next three days in English looking at setting descriptions. So we're going to start today about really unpicking about what goes into a really good setting description. So a setting is where and when the story takes place. So an author writing any type of story will use descriptive language to make sure that the setting is described to the reader. So let's look at two different ones here. I was sitting on the top deck of the boat at night time. It was really cold. Or the icy cold air took my breath away as I opened the door to begin my climb to the top deck of the boat. Sitting on the freezing cold deck chair, I pulled on my thick woolen blanket. I looked towards the dark sky and started to count the stars. It was going to be a long, cold wait. So when you read those two descriptions, they're both describing the same setting, but the author has used lots of features to make one much more effective than the other, really pulling me into the story, making me wonder what's going to happen next compared to a very literal description of the setting. So we are going to be focusing on what we can do to use setting description features, just like the bottom one there. It's important we think about why we're doing this as well. We just read that first section about the uh, it being cold on the deck. And actually, if we don't build the reader's interest in our story, they're not going to want to continue. And this setting description is right at the beginning of a story normally to really start to paint the picture, build the picture in your mind of what's happening so that everything else that happens in your mind has got a setting. So here's an example. The large white house on the corner of Edmund Street had been empty for as long as I could remember. The tall gates, which were once black, had lost most of their paint and were slowly rusting away. Inside the gates, weeds crawled over every surface, revealing more signs of neglect. So from that setting description, we can work out where the story is set. We've got on the corner of Edmund Street. We can also pick out the words the author has used to really um, spike the interest of the reader. Even this here, the weeds crawled over every surface, revealing more signs of neglect. They're not just saying there was weeds on the front of the, of the house, they're really painting this picture that allows us to infer, it's like our reading skill of inference, what exactly is happening in this setting description. So let's have this picture here. What would you say to describe this lagoon? So the lagoon means this kind of circular section of where the ocean is coming in to the cliffs. What adjectives would you use to describe the water? How would you paint a picture in the reader's mind? If, you, if they couldn't see this picture, what could you say to make sure they were really clear about where your story was? I'm gonna show you an example in a moment and see if you got any of the same words. So pause the screen, think about how you would describe this setting. Okay, here's the one I wrote. For many years, the clear turquoise waters of the Caribbean were one of the most dangerous places to be. Ships carrying the Jolly Roger flag lurked in the deep waters, ready to pounce. So you can see there, I've made a, a description about the water, turquoise water. I've said where this lagoon is, I've said it's in the Caribbean. I've also described the ships with their Jolly Roger flag, but I've also used language like lurked in the deep waters, ready to pounce. So I've given the reader something to think about. Maybe this ship is ready to attack somewhere rather than just saying there was a ship in the water. So when we are using a setting description, authors usually use the five senses, which I'm sure you can remember, touch, smell, hearing, taste, and sight. And making sure we cover all of those or as many of them as possible really gives a full picture. So it's not just what you can see, it's what you can hear around you, it's what you can smell. And all of that helps the reader to almost transport themselves exactly to the place where you are describing. So let's have a go at this together before you have a go for your assignment today. Looking at this picture, we've got a forest, a nice autumnal forest. I'll give you some vocab to start with. That means in autumn, and you can see that by the colour of the leaves. Thinking about those five questions, what does it smell like? What can you hear? What can you see? What can you taste? What can you touch? Pause the screen there. You can 
ideally put these in sentences, but if you can't put them in sentences yet, just think about the bullet points that you would uh, use to answer those five senses questions. And again, I'm gonna show you how I would turn those into sentences. So pause the screen, look at this autumnal forest and have a think about how you would answer all five of these sense, uh, senses. Okay, here's the one I've written and I've turned my thoughts into a paragraph. The autumnal leaves crunched under my feet as I ran through the Blackwood Forest. The earthy smell of the forest floor filled my nostrils. I stopped to catch my breath. Listening carefully, I heard the birds singing from the topmost tree branch. I reached out my left hand, allowing my fingers to brush against the smooth, wet leaves. So as you can see there, I've described where I am, Blackwood Forest. I've got the sound of the crunching leaves and the feel of the crunching leaves. I've got the sound of the birds. But I haven't just said listening carefully, I hear birds singing. I've also added that prepositional phrase from the topmost tree branch, adding as much detail that will paint that picture. What you can touch, she's touching the smooth, wet leaves and that expanded noun phrase there. So I haven't used every single one of the senses, but I've used enough senses to really paint a well-rounded set and description. Now, when you do this for your activity, you've got two pictures. You're gonna have a beach scene, this one here, is your first picture you're gonna think about. And the second one is a spooky haunted house. Now you can set your own challenge for this. You open your team's assignment. You can either label underneath the pictures like bullet points, answering those five questions, or if you're ready to challenge yourself, turn those into sentences or even a paragraph is the top challenge to describe the setting, focusing on using your five senses. Give as much detail as possible. So remember to go onto Teams now, write it on the Word document and then click submit and then it will come through to us at school for us to have a look at. If you're unable to get onto Teams, you can just do your uh, writing on uh, paper and keep this video open to flick to the pictures. Well done guys, I'm looking forward to reading these.